What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to more gameplay from Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. And while we have seen a few of these decks before already, we do have a new one today, and a returning one that we haven't seen in a while. Also, if you are a fan of CEDH content, and you'd like to see some more on this channel a little more often, let us know in the comments down below. But with that being said, let's jump straight into the decks. Up first, we have Cody playing Urza, Lord High Artificer. This deck is a really powerful control slash combo deck. This deck's combo is the Poly Tyrant combo. It's not a hard combo to pull off, but Cody really doesn't have to race to get it. Since he's playing mono blue, all he really has to do is hold on to counter magic and also play a few of the artifacts that slow his opponents down. Cody keeps a starting hand of two snow-covered islands, a flooded strand, an ancient tomb, sapphire medallion, Gitaxian probe, and a rhystic study. Up next, we have Ethan playing Emery, Lurker of the Lock. This deck is also very powerful and it relies on artifact-based combos. Its main combo is the Isorev combo to try to make infinite mana. And since it is also in mono blue, it runs a lot of counter spells and other such interaction. His starting hand has an Island, a Soul Ring, Chromatic Star, Isochron Scepter, Shimmer Mirror, Mystic Reflection, and Back to Basics. Up next, we have Chandler playing his Grand Arbiter Augustine the Fourth deck. And I'm sure you guys already knew, but this deck is hard stacks. The entire point of this deck is to make sure nobody is having fun but yourself. And once everybody is successfully subdued, you try to pull out your own combo. Which Chandler is playing the Painter Servant and Grindstone combo. He keeps a starting hand of Island, Sea of Clouds, Command Tower, Mana Vault, Muddle the Mixture, Dovin's Veto, and Karn the Great Creator. And last up we have Cameron on Selvala, Heart of the Wilds. This deck is attempting to make as much mana as possible by using Selvala's ability, untap effects, and massive creatures to cast the biggest finale of devastation possible. Cameron keeps a starting hand of Forest, Castle Garenbrig, Gaia's Cradle, Wild Growth, Phyrexian Soul Gorger, Regal Force, and Bottoms in Ashaya Soul of the Wild. All right, everyone, we've seen who's playing what and their starting hands. Now let's jump straight into that game. But first, who do you think's gonna win? Let us know in the comments. It looks like Ethan wins the die roll, and he starts his turn off with an island into a turn one soul ring. After that, he taps it to cast a chromatic star, and passes. Camera plays a forest, enchants it with wild growth, and then passes to Chandler. Chandler plays his sea of cloud, and casts a mana vault before passing to Cody. On Cody's turn, he free casts a git probe by paying two life, targeting Ethan, and looks at Ethan's hand. He then plays ancient tomb, and takes two damage to it to cast a sapphire medallion. He shifts the turn to Ethan after that. Ethan starts his turn off by playing a Minamo as land for turn. He then casts Emery for one, milling four cards. And then seeing two tapped non-basic lands, he decides to cast his back to basics. After that, he just passes the turn to Cameron. Cameron plays a Castle Garenbrig as land for turn to cast Silvala. He then passes to Chandler, who plays an island, into a Soul Ring. After that, he taps Soul Ring and Mana Vault to cast a Karn the Great Creator. He upticks with no targets and passes to Cody. Cody just plays a snow-covered island and then passes to Ethan. Ethan starts his turn off by activating Emery to cast a Codex Shredder out of his graveyard. He then plays a Seagate Reborn as land for turn, paying the 3 life, and then passes to Cameron. Cameron plays a Gaia's Cradle as his land for turn, and then just passes to Chandler. Chandler starts his turn with a Plains. Chandler then taps her 4 to cast a Grand Arbiter. Cameron responds by crop rotating his Castle Garenbrig to get a basic forest. Chandler then uptakes Karn and passes to Cody. Cody plays another Snow Island, and then passes to Ethan. Ethan plays an Island, then taps it for one to cast a Mox Opal. He then swings at Cody for one, and then passes to Cameron. Cameron taps for two to cast a Scale Up targeting Silvala. Knowing that Cameron could potentially go off with this, Cody decides to Pongify Silvala. With nothing else to do, Cameron just passes to Chandler. Chandler plays a Command Tower as land for turn, then taps for three to cast a Smothering Tithe. He then upticks Karn and passes to Cody. Cody pays for Smothering Tithe, then plays another Snow-Covered Island, and passes to Ethan. Ethan pays for Smothering Tithe, attacks Cody for 1, and then passes to Cameron. Cameron does not pay for Smothering Tithe, then taps for 3 to cast a Sheltering Ancient. He then moves to combat and swings 3 at Cody. Cameron then passes to Chandler, who pays to untap Mana Vault on his upkeep. Chandler then finally remembers that Karn's uptick kills 0-drop artifacts, so he upticks targeting Ethan's Mox Opal. He then passes to Cody, who does not pay for Smothering Tithe. 
Cody then taps her three and casts Ristic Study, thanks to Sapphire and Medallion. However, Chandler Dovins vetoes it. Cody then passes to Ethan, who immediately pays for Smothering Tithe. He then swings at Cody for one more, then just passes to Cameron. Cameron puts a 1-1 counter on Emery with Sheltering Ancient's upkeep cost, and he does not pay for Smothering Tithe. He then moves straight to combat and swings 8 at Chandler, who takes all of it. He then just passes to Chandler. Chandler plays a Tabernacle at Pendril Vale as land for turn, and then remembers that Sea of Clouds did not untap. He then upticks Karn with no targets, and then passes to Cody, who fetches for another Snow Island on the end of his turn. After a lot of thinking, Cody decides to not pay for Smothering Tithe. He then taps for 4 mana and casts his commander, Urza. He makes a construct on ETB, and Ethan reminds him that it's actually a 2-2 because of the medallion. Cody then just passes to Ethan, and on Ethan's upkeep, he pays for Tabernacle at Pendril Vale, and on his draw step, he does not pay for Smothering Tithe. He then just passes to Cameron, and on his turn, Cameron does the same thing. Pays 2 for Tabernacle on his upkeep, but does not pay for Smothering Tithe on his draw step. He also puts two more counters on Ethan's Emery. After this, he moves to combat, swinging 8 at Chandler again, who has absolutely no qualms taking it again. He then passes to Chandler, who pays for Gavi's Tabernacle Tax on his upkeep. He then upticks Karn, and then passes to Cody, and Cody pays for both of his creatures to Tabernacle on his upkeep, but he does not pay for Smothering Tithe. I'm seeing a pattern here. Cody then casts a 1 mana Lion's Eye Diamond, and then just passes to Ethan. Ethan pays for Tabernacle and not Smothering Tithe and then plays a Seed of the Synod before just passing to Cameron. But, on Ethan's end step, Chandler casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Cameron's Sheltering Ancient. Cameron then pays for Tabernacle, but not Smothering Tithe, and then plays a Forest. He then moves to Combat, and hits Chandler for 3. Post-Combat, he casts Eldritch Evolution for 4, sacrificing his 3-3. But, Chandler counters it with a Fierce Guardianship, knowing that Cameron is probably going to get a Collector Oof with it. Then Cameron just passes to Chandler. Chandler pays for Gabby's Tabernacle Tax, and then plays an island. And then after upticking Karn, Chandler just passes to Cody, who fetches on his end step for another Snow Island. Cody pays for Tabernacle, but not Smothering Tithe at the beginning of his turn. And then just passes to Ethan, who pays for Tabernacle, but not Smothering Tithe on the beginning of his turn. He then moves straight to combat, and swings at Karn for three. After this, he plays an island, and then just passes to Cameron. Cameron pays for Smothering Tithe, then just plays a forest, and passes to Chandler. Chandler once again pays for Grand Arbiter to stay around, and then casts a Fabricate. He finds a Grindstone to his hand, and then after that, upticks Karn and passes to Cody. On Chandler's end step, Cody activates Urza's last ability, shuffling his deck and revealing a Preordain. Unfortunately, cards exiled by Urza's ability do have their timing restrictions, so he cannot cast this Preordain. And it's at this time that Chandler realizes that he only had to sacrifice two treasures, not three, because Grand Arbiter made Fabricate only cost two. Now on Cody's turn, he pays for Tabernacle, but not Smothering Tithe. He then just passes to Ethan, who sacrifices Emery to Tabernacle, and does not pay for Smothering Tithe. He then taps for 4 to cast a Ristic Study. And Cody, with a handful of counterspells, knows that an unchecked Ristic Study can get out of hand and get Ethan back into this game if there's a counter war over a combo. And so Cody swan songs it. And unfortunately, with nothing else to do, Ethan just passes to Cameron. And Cameron plays an Emergent Zone, then taps for 6 to recast Zelvala. But Cody being the mono blue player that he is, Metallic rebukes it. So Cameron just passes to Chandler. And on his end step, Chandler transmutes a Muddle the Mixture. And he finds a Painter Servant to hand. Who could have guessed? Now on his turn, Chandler plays an Inventor's Fair. He then taps for 2 to cast a Painter Servant. It resolves, and he names White. He then free casts his Grindstone. Cody tries to respond by mental misstepping it, paying 2 life, but Chandler has the Dispel, and Grindstone resolves. Chandler then activates it, targeting Cody. The ability resolves, and Cody flips over his entire library. And for those of you who don't know how this combo works, Painter's Servant makes all cards in all areas the chosen color, including libraries. So this makes Grindstone's ability repeat until you've gotten their entire library. Chandler then passes the turn to Cody, who dies on his draw step, and then the turn is shipped to Ethan. Ethan does not pay for Smothering Tithe, and then just passes to Cameron. Cameron also doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe, then just casts his Phyrexian Soul Gorger, and passes to Chandler. Chandler pays for Grand Arbiter's Tabernacle Tax again, and then just activates Grindstone, milling Cameron. Cameron decides to just scoop in response, and so Chandler passes the turn to Ethan. Ethan draws his last card, and seeing he still can't do anything, concedes the game. And Chandler is the winner of today's CDH video. Well everyone, there it was. What did you think? 
our resident stacks player actually managed to get the win this time, which is especially surprising with the Silvala deck at the table. And Chandler said afterwards that he was so focused on just getting his combo off that he forgot that he could have upticked Karn to kill Ethan's artifact land there at the end. But with that aside, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. And if you haven't already, go give us a follow on our social media platforms. Links will be in the description along with the deck lists. As always, you guys, have a smooth day.